Okay, so I figured it's about time I did a proper tutorial on GIMP. Now the first thing I'm going to teach you is click the little, um, like it's a black backwards play arrow and add tab. And those are all the ones you can think. Sorry, I'm short of breath. I just had to chase my dogs around. Mm, but the one I um, added was the navigation because I like to see the picture of my bird. Got a bug up his butt. I don't know why, but he did. Okay. So, you got the brushes here, which, you know, use all the brushes. You can add more. Um, but these are just the ones that come with Photoshop. Um, not Photoshop. God, I'm so used to using Photoshop. Gimp. Then you got pattern, and then you got the gradients. To use the gradients, you use the blend tool. To use the pattern, you, you use the bucket tool. Um, let's see. Zoom in, you know. Zooming is pretty basic. Um, layers, make a new layer. Um, moves the layers up and down, creates a duplicate of the selected layer. Anchors a floating layer and deletes the selected layer. History, just go back and it's like edit, undo. Um, channels, I really don't use these a whole lot in GIMP, um, but they're there. And paths, for the what do they call it here? The paths tool. I like using the free select tool though. You can either click and just drag down to make a line, um, but I prefer to just click, let go, and just move and then it creates a line between the two points and it creates a little dot where you clicked. And I'm just gonna do this real quick. And say if, you know, I make a mistake and do that little bit there, you can just click and drag it into the spot you need it. You can do that with the path tool as well. Um, I'm just going to select a bit of her hair so I can show you how to color things. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, now that I got the hair selected, you can go on a new layer and fill it with black on color, and then make a new layer and fill the layer with whatever color you want and just mess with the little settings. There's quite a few of them there. Um, or if you want to skip the new layer thing, or also a new layer for gradients and such. Let me show you how to use the gradients real quick. Um, here's a blue to green. Click where you want to start and then where you want to stop. And there you go. Um, as far as patterns go, it's the same thing. Just go over here, pick out the pattern you want, like this awesome leopard print pattern. And you gotta choose over here pattern fill and there you go it fills with the pattern um, if you just want to change the color without using the layers you can just use the paintbrush with any of these settings or you can go to colors and use any of these I like to use hue saturation and then you can just change the colors a bit Let's see or colors colorize which will, you know, turn white to a color or black to a color. Just mess with the saturation and the lightness or darkness of it. See how you can get some good colors doing that. Or some more tamed down colors and such. <clears throat> um, let's see, the paths tool is the next thing I'll show you. Paths tool works a lot like the little free select tool or lasso tool, like I got to call it, because it looks like a little lasso. Except there's no little spot between them I mean, and just plot points and say I want um, this hair is a little bit of a curve to it so I'll go to the bottom I'll point a plot, pl uh, plot a point at the top and then at the bottom and I'll click and hold and then I'll drag it to make a curve and then continue making the points I got rid of it cuz I don't like using I don't like how it reacts in this thing, but um, I don't really use a foreground select tool or anything, so I can't really tell you how to use those because I haven't been able to use them successfully. They have a pain in the ass for me. Um, scale tool changes the way the, pic the picture, you know, basically those kind of self-explanatory. Um, you just click, you click the tool, then click on the picture, and then mess with it. Um, let's see, navigation, zoom out. You can get rid of the background by using the selection tool and selecting the background. 
Let me just select a little bit of background there, and then using either using the eraser tool and just erase, or just clicking clear. And you want to make sure you have a layer under it for you know whatever background you want to do. Otherwise, it's just going to be white or um, checkered for your transparency. So um, to get that to work, you might need to copy it and then get rid of the bottom one. I haven't had that problem, but in case you do, that's how to fix it. Because, doo -doo -doo, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I need to teach you. Um, basic, oh yeah, filters. It's got like the blur filter and such. And you just mess around with them, that's what I had to do. Um, then there's also a quick mask mode or select mode. Quick mask, yeah. Basically, it turns the whole picture red, and then whatever you t use white, I'll be selected. So I'm going to select all this area around the eye. And when I go to select toggle, so that's selected. Um, let's see. The and if you've used MS Paint, um, you're probably familiar with some of these already, like the text tool and such. Heal tool, um, I say I got tutorials for Photoshop on these, and they basically work the same as they do in Photoshop. The free select tool is like the polygonal and regular lasso. Um, the fuzzy selection tool is like the magic wand tool. The pass tool is like the pen tool. The scale tool is like edit free transform, and, you know, such. Um, bucket tools like bucket, the gradient, gradient obviously, brushes. Um, it has a smudge tool. Burn slash dodge are in the same part, so you just have to go over here and change it. Um, blur tool. Um, oh, and to merge, you right click and say merge visible layers or merge down and such. Okay, I think that covers all the basics. I'll try to get in more in depth depending on what you guys need. And I hope